Hi Bobcats, this is Miss Lee, and this lesson is on volume of rectangular prisms. Please make sure that you have your notes so that you can fill them out as we go through the video. Pause when necessary so that you can stay caught up. Let's get started. A rectangular prism is a three-dimensional, also called 3D, figure with two parallel bases that are congruent rectangles. Remember that word congruent? means equal or the same. So let's talk about this. It's three-dimensional and it has two parallel bases. The base is like the bottom, what it's sitting on. So I'm going to go ahead and shade in the base. So this is the bottom base. It's sitting on this side. And this has a congruent parallel base above it, which would be the top. So the top and the bottom bases are congruent. They're the same size and they're the same shape. Now we're in sixth grade on, are only going to focus on rectangular prisms, those that have rectangular bases. There are other type of bases or other type of prisms and they're named for the shape of their base. For example, there are triangular prisms and the shape of their base would be a triangle. But you will learn about those in seventh grade. Okay, volume. Volume is the amount of space inside a three-dimensional figure. Volume is measured in cubic units. This is where the cube comes from. When we talked about exponents, our exponent unit, and we were talking about three squared, four cubed, this is where the cube comes from. It's from three-dimensional shapes because you're multiplying together three dimensions. So volume tells you the number of cubes of a given size that it will take to fill up the prism. The cubes can be different sizes. They can be centimeters, they can be inches, they can be feet, yards. Take a look at our example over here. If we want to find how many cubes, we can look at this and we can say, okay, there's one, two, three, there's four cubes in a row and there are two rows, so that's eight. And how high, how many floors are there? If you think of an office building has lots of floors, there is only one floor. So we can multiply our four times two with one floor, and that's gonna be eight. Our volume would be eight units cubed. Looking at our red example, you can see that we have one, two, there are three cubes in a row. There are two rows that make up the base, so that's six. And then how many floors do we have? We have one floor, two floors. So that would be six times two, which would be 12 units cubed. And then our third example, the cubes are even bigger. You can see that there's one, two, there's three cubes in a row. There's only one row, but there are three floors the height would be three. So multiply that together and you would get nine units cubed. Now it's not gonna be easy to draw cubes and move them around to try to figure out how many cubes make up the volume of a particular rectangular prism. So let's look at the formula. You, if you started volume, if you were introduced to volume in elementary school, you probably learned the formula length times width times height where this is the length. If you look at your base, this is the length, it would be three. The width would be how many rows it is, which would be two. And the height would be how many floors, how tall it stands, which would be four. And you would just multiply them together. Looking at a real life example, here's a box. So here is your width. This is all on the base and the length. This describes the base of your prism or the base of the box and then the height is how tall the box stands. Well now, if you look at your formula chart, this is from our star testing, you can see that it has a different formula. It has volume equals capital BH. Well this capital B, and you need to write this down, stands for base area. When you're looking at the base of your prism that you've shaded in, it stands for the area which in our case would be base times height, 
because the area of a rectangle, the formula is right there, base times, oops, base times height. I put two Bs, didn't I? Okay, so big B stands for base area, finding the area of your base. Now, the reason why they've switched to this is because when you get into surface area or into other prisms where the bases are different shapes and they're not rectangular, they're going to have different area formulas. For example, if this shape was a triangle, you would have to use this formula right here for the triangle. So that's why they're getting into that capital B, big base area. But we can think of this as being our base times our height. So when we actually do examples, we can rewrite our formula to include that. So let's just go and do some examples. The first one. Okay, we know the formula is going to be base times height, big B. I forgot the volume, sorry. Volume equals base times height. But this capital B base area, let's look at what the base looks like can't see the bottom base, but we know that the top base is congruent to the bottom, so I'm going to shade the top base. So here is your base. And let's look at the dimensions. The length of our base, the base length, is this length right here, which it doesn't say, but opposite sides are equal in a rectangle. So it's going to be 6 inches. And then here's the width. And the width here, again, opposite sides are equal is going to be 3 inches. So that's the base area. So we can rewrite this big B as saying base times height of our rectangle and then multiply that by the height of the prism. Or if you wanted to write it as length times width times height, you could. I'm okay with that. So let's write our equation. Okay, we're going to use, let's use the volume equals length times width times height. So volume is going to equal, the length is 6, and I'm going to put mine in parentheses, times the width, which is 3, times the height, which is how tall the prism is, which is 5. Ignore this E, my pen is going crazy. Let me see if I can, yep, I was able to move it out of the way. And now all you have to do is the math. And you can do it in any order that you want because multiplication is commutative. If you want to do 6 times 5 first and get 30, multiply that by 3, I think that's probably the easiest. You would get 90. So volume is 90, and don't forget it's inches cubed. Okay, let's try another one. The formula is going to be volume equals base area times the height. Let's go ahead and break down the base area and let's let our formula be length times width times height. Okay, we need to find the base length and width. Can't see the bottom, but at the top I can see that the base length is 8. And what is this width right here? Well, I can look down at the bottom and it says 3 and 1 fourth inches. And because that's easy to convert to a decimal, I'm going to write 3.25. So I'm going to write my equation, volume equals the length of 8 times the width of 3.25 times the height, 12 and a half, which is the same as saying 12.5. And then I just do the math. 8 times 3.25 is going to be 26. And I multiply that by 12.5 and I get 325 and put your measurements inches cubed. <coughs> and our last one. Formula again, volume equals the base area times the height. So let's go ahead and identify the base area. And look at the bottom. Here's the base area right here. So I'm going to break down this capital B for base area into length times width. So volume is going to be length times width and then times your height. So plug in all the numbers. The length is the base length right here, 6. 
times the width is 4.9 times the height of 3.5. I'm going to leave everything in decimal form to make it easier. I'm going to multiply 6 times 4.9 is going to give me 29.4. Multiply that by 3.5 and you're going to get I don't know why it always does that. And you're going to get 102.9 and it's going to be meters cubed. And that's all there is to it.